Afro Velvet. Afro Velvet. Afro Velvet. Performance name that was given to me by my people that rap a bit older than me is Nathaniel Benetton Gray. So, like to me, the person who I who I really am is not different from the person who people perceive me to be through my music or my art. So, but we all need platforms. So, the name Nate Gray came from a superhero. Uh, his 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 name is Nate Gray, but his superhero name is X Men. And they gave me that name when I first started performing in the city. Um, I had like locks that came like right here, a chunk of it was pink and purple, I had bones in my hair, I had feathers, all types of things. And so when I, when I performed, I looked real animated, it said, I looked like an X-Men, it was just colors just swirling all over the place, and it evolved into what it is now. Um, so like, yeah, it's just, I just grew up around people that have been older than me, just gave me a rap name, and I just kind of ran with it. So that's the story behind, like, Nate G. Um. So as far as me, uh, Afro Velvet kind of came from both like the inspiration of my mom and my friends and then also just like uh, my own identity. Um, in 2013, when I graduated from college, I started a creative like branding agency with my friends and we were working together and basically, you know, I was styling for like small shoots or things like that and they kind of encouraged me to really go for it because that's what I wanted to do. Um, and my mom was always like raising me in fashion and art and music and all of that. So really just like the the like eye for or love for fashion and beauty was um, something that's always been there. So yeah, I mean, long after, uh, you know, the creative agency, um, kind of ended and I had to come up with the name Afro Velvet. Um, basically, it just kind of spoke to, you know, who I felt was, I was and that's like a black woman who, you know, rocks her Afro, is proud to be, you know, um, um, of the African diaspora and then also just it speaks to the velvet side, which is like the fashion, classic material type thing and I also kind of, um, uh, relate that to black skin. I think that black skin is like velvety, so um, that's where you kind of get that from. Um, well, I mean, basically, not just the body. Um, we kind of created it because of what was going on at the time. It was yeah. kind of our response to that. Um, that was when I guess like a lot of like the police shootings were yeah. happening. Um, <clears throat> people were mobilizing around it, and. We just wanted to express ourselves. That's kind of how it initially came out. We were in Pittsburgh. We didn't have much but a mic and uh, speakers and a computer. And literally, we just took some beats that somebody sent us and we, we wrote over them. We wrote about gentrification. We wrote about um, you know slavery. We wrote about jail systems. Um, we wrote about you know, the future and how we can also impact our children and our youth and, um, you know, just kind of also just speaking to the, the general black community about um, how we feel like we can, we can take control of our empowerment and empowerment. And it wasn't something that we sat down and said, hey, let's write about all of these things. It was more of a, this is a, it's, we wrote about our lives. If anything, we strive to write what was really inside of us. We didn't sit down like how she's explaining it to you. It's not a discussion that we had before we did it. We said, let's just, let's just express it, let's just get it out. And there wasn't a lot of conversation before the songs happened. We just found ourselves in a mutual wavelength. And because we are who we are in this, in this, in this world, in this portion of the earth, this is what we experienced. So it naturally came out the way that it did. We didn't spend a lot of time 
um, talking about uh, how it was going to come out. We sort of just, it was just a burst of energy. Yeah, I mean, I think that the best thing that we can do is really take control over our art forms and how we feel about other people appropriating um, and using our, like you said, our grief, our um, our suffering, like anything for uh, monetizing, like monetizing it and getting money from it, or or um, you know making it this thing that's glorified or put on TV or put in stores like Urban Outfitters. Um, you know, it's like for years our culture has always been um, taken for everyone instead of being respected as something that came from us and something that could be enjoyed but not necessarily taken and used over and over again. Um, so really I think it's our duty to kind of say, hey, this is enough. Um, you know, I can't take your culture. I can't go and, you know, put on a sari and do a video where I'm like dancing, you know, like I'm from India and I'm not even doing the right dances and I'm not even doing it right, you know, that's disrespectful. So um, I think a lot of people don't see black culture as something that needs to be respected and so then it gets disrespected. Um, so I really just think that it's, it's, it's our position and our, we have to do this, yeah. we have to talk about it, we have to make it known that, you know, we, we do value what we have and mm -hmm. that it shouldn't be just used. And it, it, it could get difficult too because art, it, it has a thing where it exists on its own. Once, once it's created, it's its own entity and it stands by itself. And um, I learned this when I uh, was uh, in high school. I went to be done, but in class, like the principles of art, when you create something, you, you're supposed to put inside of the thing that you create the points that you want to get across. Everybody might not take the same journey and get to that point, but you as an artist, it's your responsibility to make sure that people get what it is that you're trying to say. You can't stand beside it and explain it. Um, so I think that, you know, everything has an up and a down. I think in the, in the biggest scheme of things, art has that ability and that magic to bridge the gap, but then it gets confusing in the midst of it because you don't know where it's coming from, you don't know where it's going. So definitely everything that Melissa said, and I also feel like along with that, like art, anything that's created, it has the ability to not only give you what is natural, but also give you the origin. Like, this is where this comes from. You can just, it's okay to respect that. It's okay to know where it comes from. You know, so I think there's a lot of magic in art, you know, but being able to help bridge that gap. So like Nate, um, recently he kind of brought together um, a group of people and uh, just over the, conversation of appropriation really and just helping um, you know us to come together as a community and understand how we can support one another. Uh, we had a dinner in here where we talked about you know how, so <laughs> how we could come together and do that. Um, you know the, the food was provided by um, you know people who are trying to um, put on their, you know, food business, um, but, you know, they're African American, or like, um, in the room we had a guy lecture who just came out with a book, um, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he, um, you know, he owns his own, basically, what is it, like a, a new school. Yeah, it's like a new yeah. school, principles, yeah, school, whole a whole book, and, you know, so it's like, we're just trying to uh, help people we understand are. that we are, we are. helping people yeah. understand that when we come together, we'll see the value, um, the things that we have within our communities and we can learn how to work together. We can learn how to support each other, um, whether it's with money, whether it's with numbers, whether you know it's with space, um, anything really. Uh, it just takes us coming together as a community and not you know being scared to approach the next person and, and you know, just network with each other, um, love each other, because, you know, it's gonna take a lot of that. A lot of love. Yeah, so. It takes a whole lot of respect. It takes a whole lot of respect for not only the other person, but yourself. And it takes that inclination of listening first. Like, of course you have something that you wanna say, but it's always best to just have more of an ear um, so that you can 
We understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, definitely respect and listen. Yeah, I mean, and like, me and Nate are really different um, when it comes to creating, when it comes to understanding Almost each everything. other. <laughs> Almost everything. <laughs> Almost everything, really. Um, but I think, like, he's right. Like, the respect factor comes in first because he knows that I'm an artist. I know that he's an artist. And I respect his art. So, you know, when it comes to that, I know that, like, that's something that he has to take care of. Um, he knows that, you know, if I'm in here late nights doing something, that's something that I have to take care of. And just really supporting each other through that, that helps with, you know, um, just helping the relationship, you know, sustain yeah, it's itself, so too. Yeah, because yeah. like, usually when, well, I can say this um, in the time we've been together, my art suffers. <laughs> in terms of our relationship, my half of the relationship suffers. Because you know, we're, we're we're people first. We're artists first. We're a lot of things first before we are Apple Velvet and Bad Nozizki, and we have and it's good that we understand all of those first before we get to that point where we are like Apple Velvet and Bad Nozizki. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we just love each other. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and I think it's also important to, like, understand that, you know, um, you are going to go through things with your partner. And it's just, like, whether or not you want to be in it for the, the long run or, you know, because you can, you can have art and love and creation and um, two people owning a business and all of that. You can work together. Everything can work. It's just, you know... Not feeding into society, not feeding into your friends and people telling you, girl, no, like, <laughs> don't be with him. <laughs> and making a choice. And making a choice every day is just one choice. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. This, this, my, this is this is the crush I'm going to be with. And you, know, you make a choice every day. Like, I'm either going to go all the way out to the gym and record until ungodly hours in the morning, <laughs> or I'm going to go home. Man, because, uh, like, Melissa, like, it's wild. I've, I've known her for a, a little bit more than a good amount of time, but she still surprises me with things she's able to do. Um, so I think just, I know I'm an artist, but seeing, seeing and knowing her as an artist, but also in, the, in and of that, she continues to surprise me with things that she's able to make, the ideas she's able to come up with. Um, She's like my, my best, like one of my best friends. She's like my best friend. Um, so it's 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 really important for me to um, help support her. I don't know. It's 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 wild because like I don't know, as as the young woman that I love, I want to protect her. I want to like help guide her. I want to keep her warm. You know, shelter and all that <laughs> stuff. So it kind of carries over into the art. I feel the same. Anything that she has going on. You know, I want to do whatever I can to, 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 to help push it along. To help, you know, protect whatever she has. I just want to be a part and be around and help be like a part of like the life force that's going on. But that really just stems from like, I think like my, like how I feel about it first. Um, and I have like, you know, I, I grew up with my mother and my sister. So I grew up around um, black women. So just overall, just like I have a certain like respect um, that I just, that's automatically there. And, um, and even more so because it's 2017 and there's like an air uh, about most black men, you know, not respecting black women when it comes to relationships or anything else, it kind of snowballs down. Um, knowing people and also being a rapper, so having that platform, I do whatever I can, whether it's somebody that I know or a group of people that I'm speaking with or a microphone, whatever I can do to, to to, to sort of show that this is something that I do in my life, it's good, you should do it too. Um, well, my mom really uh, got me inspired in, in fashion. Um, just like anything that has to do with uh, beauty or uh, creating a look. Um, growing up, like my mom was always like taking us to estate sales and uh, she was always taking us shopping and her closet was literally always full and my dad was always like 
Sean, what is that that you have? Like, because she was always like hiding bags because she literally we went shopping like way too much. Um, <laughs> so like my mom <laughs> was like the the fashionista. Like whenever we would go to church, like everybody knew that Sean was coming to play. Like you know, and I just really wanted to be like her. So I picked that up along the way, and um, you know, ever since then, my mom she also went to Howard for a period of time for um, fashion merchandising. She always says, like, I'm living out her dream because, like, that's what she wanted to do and, like, now I'm doing it. And, um, yes, I would really, I would really just say this whole thing, honestly, is just, like, a tribute to my mother because that's, she, that's the hard work that she put in and I just really saw her and looked at her every day and she was my full inspiration and so now it's coming out through my work. Uh, it's Mm, it's it's changed a lot. It's not it's nothing like the same that it was, and it uh, it's it's funny because I'm I'm almost like a young OG, just given the time, the way that the time has worked itself out, man. Um, because I know some of the older cats, maybe <coughs> 30, 40 plus, who were probably performing in DC um, during the nineties and whatnot. Um, and they've always had a mentality that it's the city of the crabs in a barrel. Selling it, nothing can be done, and that's their mentality that they have as far as music, DC, especially when it comes to like hip hop and rap. And then you have younger cats who fresh out of high school, 18, 19, 17, and I know them as well. Um, and their mentality is exactly like that. They feel like they are able, capable of doing anything. And not only that, a lot of them go forth into the world and behave just like that. And because of that, because of that. DC has changed. Um, it's 2017. Most of the neighborhoods that I grew up seeing under construction, they complete now. They're wonderful condos, and uh, the whole city is changing. And with that, there is a whole crop of uh, people that come here. Um, millennials, millennials, hipsters. These people are our age as well. They're just not from here. So you have this, you have this setup where you have people who are from here, young, creating growing up and they, they're creative, they, they, they think that they're capable of everything, and they are. And then you have people who come here who love to see art, but they don't know really where to get it, so they kind of make it, and then you have all of these factions. And, and the wonderful part about it is all of this is mixing into a nice melting pot because the city is only 10 by 10 miles, and it's hard to keep these things separate from each other. So the DC that was, the, uh, the older DC, DC, Crab in a burrow, can't break through to now we have the DMV, uh, DC, Maryland, Virginia. Um, people from Virginia come to DC, people from Maryland go to Virginia. And, you know, it's all of this mixing. Um, I think that they, I think because of that, because of because of the the, the size of the city, the, the, the technology and how people are able to take advantage of it now, the fact that the city is growing and that people, more people are moving here, more people are having more interest in what comes from here. I think that the overall mentality is, what's going on over there? What's going on in that city? And then when people actually look and start to you know, put a microscope, there's a lot of beautiful things to find. There's a lot of great sounds to, to get into, and not just music, art overall, art, just anything creative. Um, so I would say that because the city is growing, it's changing, it's changing the mentality of the people that make art here. And, um, it's also creating more channels and platforms for people to be able to access things that they may not even know that they're interested in. Um, so I would, if, if I could sum it all up, I just think that the city is becoming more open. Uh, it's becoming more interesting as well because more people are paying attention to what's going on here. And overall, I think it's, I think it's a good thing. Personally, oh man, I remember when I left uh, for college to go to NCCU, and um, when I was here and I was rapping, there was almost nothing really going on. Uh, when I left and came back, it was right around the time of uh, 07, 08. So everyone had a blog, a lot of hip hop blogs came out. And uh, in particular, Raheem Devon had a, uh, an event at Pure Lines on U Street where he was going to sign an artist. And he ended up signing Fat Trail. And Fat Trail came out, and Phil Our Day was out. And it was like maybe two, and then Raheem was out, and then when those artists came out, I was like, ooh, what's happening in DC? And you had a couple few more artists come out. 
about it. So, um, I mean, me personally, when I got back, I just wanted to rip everything, rip everybody, just be the best. That's what any rapper wants to do. So because of that, a lot of people know my name here in DC. Um, it's been a great, great, great journey. Um, I'm not done, I'm not dead or anything, but it's it's been great. It's been a, it's been a wonderful experience. Just running around rapping at every event that I could possibly make at cookouts, uh, block parties, events, clubs. I, 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 I rap pretty much any and everywhere that you play in the city, even down at the monument in 420. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been a great experience, and, and in the world that it's just made me want to keep keep going and keep going and keep trying to create that definitive work for my people. Um, I would say like I I draw most of my inspiration from like abstract things. Um, I'm like I try if anything I try to like stay out of tune with anything that's like going on or like any videos that people are putting out, any uh, new fashions that people are putting out. I mean, when people ask me, like, do I know what this designer did and that did, I'm like, who? <laughs> so, like, for, for the most part, I draw my inspiration from abstract things because, like, I really like for them to be original um, ideas. I, I like for my art to, to strike a chord in people, um, and I like to know that it is coming from, like, the depths of, like, who I am. So, I mean, I would say, like, colors, shapes. Um, you know, nature, and, um, I mean, I could see some, you know, like, a brooch on somebody one day, and, like, see, like, a whole outfit from that, you know, like, it's just, like, different, like, abstract things, like, within the world that I pay attention to, um, and then I'd say, like, my greatest inspiration is honestly God, because, like, that, like, he, God is, like, the, the, the biggest creator, you know, like, and I'm just really, like, always in awe, like, wow, wow, God, <laughs> like, that's cool, <laughs> like, I was just, I would be like that, like, you know, like, just, like, wowing people with my art, and just really, honestly, just creating something for people to enjoy, to, to, um, to love, and, um, to see that, like, you know, like, I'm also pushing love through my art, um, and, you know, like, I'm, I'm hoping that my art can, you know, affect somebody's life in a positive way. So, yeah, I would say, like, that's mainly where my inspiration comes from. Fuck, man, that's just gonna be so shallow. <laughs> Mine's is a bit more outward. I'm really, I get a lot of inspiration from pop culture. See, <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> so There's a lot of things I see. <laughs> a lot of that stuff really um, catches catches my eye. Even when I was a child, like I didn't even really get into rap until I was, I was running around the house with my PJs. I saw some TV. Just stop. <laughs> you know, so even to this day, like pop pop culture really influences me. Um, but it's it's how it makes me feel. When I experience pop culture, how I feel really is what comes comes out of that. And um, I think that's the biggest like strike spark for me as far as like what inspires me. It's mostly uh, how I feel about the outward things that I experience. There was the there was this one time there was um, if you know where the new movie theater is across the street from nine I'm sorry, the movie theater right beside nine thirty club in DC. Right across the street from that is a huge condo. It's it's really big, it's really glass kind it's one before that was up, there was a small parking garage. And this parking garage had three guns. In the city, I mean, right there, you could just go in. It was great. I mean, from the, it was graffiti everywhere. Great, great pieces. Um, before they started the construction on that condo, um, somebody threw a really big party there. I mean, tickets, there were drinks everywhere, artists were all over the place, food trucks. It was amazing. It was really amazing because it was that vibe that I was mentioning. You know, hipsters, people from the cities, a mix of everybody. And <laughs> I had just dropped the project. Um, I, I found out who put the whole thing together, asked them if I could perform. They said I could. I went to the DJ. I gave them my set on USB. They said I had five minutes. 
my song was only two minutes. So all of this is great because I learned how to talk to people. I learned what you have, actually have to do to get something like this done, how to talk to DJs. I have my whole set of USBs that just kept on me in case of a situation just like this. So they said, okay, well, you know, they gave me the mic. The cord had to have been about maybe 40 to 50 feet long. The cord was huge. And the middle of the parking lot, right, I just, they put my beat on there. And I was like, you know, that's not the party music. The beat starts, I'm walking in circles around him, the crowd is just moving. And before I know it, I have all this space to just move. And I have, and I have music coming, and it's great. And I perform this one song I, I did called Frankie Mountain. And it was, it was my most cherished memory ever because I hopped in the middle of a thing, in the middle of the city that people had no idea about, and they loved the song. And I didn't have to pay attention to anything. I got to close my eyes, and the cement was smooth, and I got to just, just tippy toe all over the place, and people really loved it. And I still have people that follow my music to this day from that performance. So that was that's my most cherished memory. And you can't even go there anymore because there's a con on top of it. Now. <laughs> so, <laughs> on top of it, not it's not gone. <laughs> yeah. That's gone. <laughs> Mine is um, my show that I did, 100% Cacao, which was like for me just the ideal like situation because um, as a Libra, I just like love people. I love like bringing people together, um, and like for the show, like I I was able to just like get a whole bunch of my friends, like even people from the street, like I would just like walk down the street on certain days and be like, yo, I want you to model for me. And like, it turned out that like almost everybody that I, I ended up getting for the show were like artists in their own right, or, you know, just like they turned out being really good friends. So like to this day, I feel like everybody that I like brought together was like, we're just all like still really mm -hmm. good friends. We're all doing art, like everybody's prospering because like, they're realizing their potential and it's really it's really just awesome um so i'd say more than the show it was just like bringing those people together and like still having those people in my life you lost a few and huh you lost a few what do you mean i lost it you, you lost Oh, long, he said I launched a few careers. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> like, some of them are, like, now, like, actually modeling and, like, <laughs> in New York. And I'm like, can you put me on? Like, <laughs> but, like, <laughs> yeah, it's just really cool to just see that because, like, I just really feel like my, my, my um, position in this life and, um, like, what I'm here for is to bring people together through my art and through fashion and through just love, really, like, I don't know. I'm such a, like, weird <laughs> That was Sorry. one of my, that, that's my second, that's my second cherish because I was there and I saw it and I don't know how she did it. Can you imagine? She even went on the streets and put, like, lead paste posters up. It was great. It was, it was a great show. And five years from now, I would have run for mayor of the city, and I would have won, and I would have launched a great artistic thing for the city and all the youths. But for the most part, um, <laughs> still doing the same exact thing, except on a bigger scale. That's what it is. It's the same thing. Raps, art, just much bigger, more colorful, more. <laughs> um, and yeah, for me, like Apple Velvet. Um it's going to, you know, be an all-around collective for um, Black artists who need management and music and um, who want to get married, who, you know, like, <laughs> who are, like, interested in, in, in modeling, who are interested in designing, who are interested in, in, in helping people brand themselves. Like, I really want to bring Black creatives together under one roof um, and, and just push, like, image creation and and just redefining who we are to the world. So, yeah. love yourself. <laughs> love yourself first, and be truthful with yourself first, and then you love everyone else after that, and be truthful with everyone else after that. Because you can't love other people and be truthful with other people <laughs> if you didn't do the first thing I said before I said. And never be afraid of what you have inside. Like I know it can be scary, but. 
Um, you have to like follow your passions because at the end of the day, that's the only thing that's going to give you true satisfaction. And that's the only way that you'll be happy and live a long life and, you know, yeah. And, so. and, and, and download your, your, your local rapper's mixtape. <laughs> <laughs> and buy black. <laughs>